It's uh, three minutes after two. Let's go. And Lori would expect us to be timely, so. Oh, is that how that works? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's the first one. Um, oh. oh, yeah. I, I put the name of the first one down in the bottom, in, the bottom of each, uh, each slide when we change uh, speakers. And so each speaker has a, at least a minute to talk about each slide because we've got about 47 slides. <laughs> so, oh, good. Um, so I'll make it, make it quick and just simply tell you this over by Tomahawk Creek Park. Hmm. And I'm always fascinated by sculpture. And um, so I just took this one. There's, there's a nice little trail back behind it. And I won't go into all that because we talked about trails a week or so ago. But it's, I just like this sculpture a lot. Who's the artist? You know, I, I should have looked to see. I don't know. Yeah. I might have to do a, a Google search and try to figure it out. So. Okay. Which park was it again, Jonathan? Pardon? Which park was it again? It's Tomahawk Creek. Oh, it's okay. Off, hmm. Yeah, it's off uh, Tomahawk Parkway. It's over around 115th, 120th, something in that range. So. Oh. It's got a parking area, and then there's a, a nice long walk that you can walk along and take you all the way over to, uh, uh, actually, to the state line, to Warnell. Uh -huh. so. Kind of looks oh. like she ought to be called Spinach Girl. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Spinach Girl? Wow. <laughs> well, this one's for Paul. Paul's up for the next few slides. Well... The, uh, most of the pictures you'll see were taken within a half mile of my house. You know, I, especially the first couple weeks in February, we pretty much isolated ourselves. And, and I'd go out just down, if you know Lawrence, 31st Street, walk toward that way of, of, on O'Connell. And I'd like macro photography. And I just kind of got on the ground. I had my dog with me. He's not in the frame, fortunately. And, um, you know, took a few shots of the dandelions. I thought they were really, really neat. Yeah. So it's a good representation of the sorts of things I like to do. Yeah, I like, I like the fuzzy dandelions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried, was trying to get several layers of focus, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I succeeded at least to my satisfaction. So. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to leave it up to each person who... Uh, is is speaking about their photo to tell me when to move on to the next slide. So it's all up to you. Oh, it's, uh, am I again next? Yep. Years are all yeah. in a row. Okay. And I have no idea what the order is, but let's go on to the next slide. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, this yeah. was about, I think, three weeks ago in my yard. Quite frankly, about a third of my photos this year have been taken in my yard. <laughs> so oh. I haven't really gone anywhere. And... Normally, I have horrible luck getting hummingbirds, and I had come back from um, with my dog from a walk and noticed the hummingbird feeding on my, that's bee balm, if you're familiar with that. Um, and uh, so I figured, no, nah, I'm not going to be able to get the bird, but I'll go in and grab my camera and come back out. So I grabbed my camera, and the bird just kind of ignored me, This and and, uh, and stayed around for about 20 minutes. And, wow. And, uh, so these slides were taken with um, a uh, 400 millimeter lens, and I was about as close as I could get. So, but I was quite pleased. I got a number of nice shots, but I thought this was the nicest of the bunch. Yeah, so, that's beautiful. Okay, yeah. Next slide. Um, I'm an entomologist by training. And I was very pleased to get this damselfly. Yeah. You know, I, when I look online, I see all these great pictures of damselflies. And I've always had horrible luck getting them. But um, I was on a walk at Mary's Lake in Lawrence and just got the right amount of light that I could get a decent shot of um, the damselflies that were there. So it was, was one of the better pictures, actually. Beautiful okay. coloring. Yeah, they are. They are. I can't take any credit for the color here. <laughs> um, okay, next slide. Yeah. Um, again, as I mentioned, I've been pretty much staying close to home. And this is about maybe 
three blocks south of my house on O'Connell Road in Lawrence. And this is the O'Connell Youth Ranch, if you're familiar with that. And I was walking with my dog. This was in, in the early, late afternoon, early evening. And the lighting was just, this yeah. is not a shot I would normally take, but the lighting was just this wonderful, warm, golden color. And so I had to take pictures of that. So I took a number of pictures of this of this area simply because of the lighting more than anything else. And this was actually one of the better shots that came out from that. Excellent. Good okay, job. Next, next slide, I think. Oh. Oh, this is my, this is my uh, shooting companion. This is Romeo. He's about five, five years old. And this was a real hot day and we had gone to Baker Wetlands, and that's a pretty good hike from my house. And uh, we got about halfway done, and he said, nope, not gonna do this anymore, and he just popped himself down. So I literally had to carry him uh, down to the way home. Uh, you know, for a small dog, the microclimate down close is a lot different than at head height for us. And he was getting really hot, so uh, fortunately we made it back okay. Um, next slide. Yeah, I do a lot. I take a lot of flower shots. Flowers yeah. don't move a whole lot. And uh, this, anybody know what this is? An ant. <laughs> no, 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 the flower. Uh, hibiscus, is it a hibiscus? No, no, no. this is what, this is bindweed. Oh, okay. Is, um, you know, it's a very, if you look, many areas where you have low grass, you'll see these white flowers and that's bindweed. It's related to morning, it's in the morning glory. Uh -huh. anyway. How, uh, how big? Oh, pardon me. Um, I'm guessing in an inch and a half, maybe. Oh, Not real okay. big flower, but they're called okay. bindweed because when you walk through them, you, your legs get tangled in them. Uh -huh. uh, the ant is a an ant called Monomorium, and uh, oh, wow. it's about that right. ant. It's about maybe two millimeters long. Hmm. Is that an ant on the other flower, or is that something? Yeah, there's five, several. Five. I had five or six shots, but this was the only one of that bunch that did what I wanted, what I was hoping it would do. So, I mean, I had sort of pre-planned the sort of shot that I wanted, which I don't normally do, but I did in this particular case. Okay. Cool. As I recall, this was a pretty windy day, which is not something that you like if you do macro photography. Paul, are you shooting down at, towards the ground, or this almost no, looks like a vine? At, at this, I was at ground level. I mean, I was literally lying down. Okay, so it it is growing up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. You take your camera wherever you go. Mm -hmm. you yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, either my my single lens reflex or my I take a lot of pictures with my cell phone. Um, I learned, a, I've learned a lot about composition from doing that because, you know, the cell phone's pretty limited compared to a regular camera. And so it forces you to be real careful in terms of, forces me to be real careful in taking shots. Uh, next slide. I think there's more. Oh, yeah. This was the other week at Baker Wetlands, and there are three wonderful patches of these giant water lilies. And uh, this is a native species, and um, this is the best of the shots that I got that day. It was kind of a partly cloudy day, and so the <laughs> shot was either too bright or too dark. But this one turned out the best <coughs> of the bunch. Um, I had several other shots that I liked, but I liked this one, this one better. I had to crop it a little bit to get some stuff out of the way, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, I liked the shot. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous. That's the, and you can see why I like flowers. They don't move very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, next slide. Uh, this is just a neighborhood shot. This is um, on O'Connell yeah. in Lawrence, uh, looking right north. Back. And this right. one yard had these wonderful, um, wonderful blooms. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name. Red, red bud. And red bud. And I forget what the, I think that's a, uh, a crab, an apple of some sort. Crab yeah, apple, yeah. yeah. Why did you include the light poles? Have you thought about cropping that, that 
I thought about that, you know, but but when I did it, it wasn't, it didn't seem as interesting to me. And and I oftentimes like the, the you know, sort of interaction between the natural world and and our abuse of it, if you will. This seemed like a good shot. I've wanted to incorporate the light poles in a shot, but never got a shot that I thought showed them to their best advantage, which is hard to do. And so this this is actually, a, I was quite pleased with this shot overall. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. I like the, the contrast between the organic yeah, and the was, mechanical. So. Yeah, and, and also getting the what I thought would be a, a good um, uh, perspective, if you will. But, uh, okay, uh, more slides? I know I, is that it? No. Oh, this this slide should have been first. This is at Disney World, uh, as Jonathan knows, for the week before they closed. And we, you know, we were there, and even before they closed, we could see that they were doing a lot of, of cleaning and that sort of thing. So they were trying to stay on top of this. Uh, the park itself at this time was not very crowded, which we liked because many times when I worked at the college, the only time we would get to go was during spring break or something like that. And it's miserable um, at that time. But this re you know, wasn't really very crowded and this again, beautiful light and uh, it's a shot I've taken dozens of times, and it's, but I was quite pleased in how this one came out. Yep, it's good. I like it. Mm. But I, I think I titled this, uh, I, I use Flickr, if you're familiar with Flickr, as a, to store my photos. And, mm. and as a f photography community, it's a, it really can't be beat. Lots of good people on Flickr. Um, you mm. can see people crossing over the bridge in the background. Okay, uh, next, is there no more slides? Oh, now we're on to no, Suzanne. Yeah, okay. If she's on. I don't remember. I haven't seen her come on, but. Where, where is this taken, do you know? This is Italy. This is Italy, oh, okay. Wow, yeah. 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 Wow. yeah, yeah. So she was there during the pandemic, or? Yeah, just as they closed, as they closed down. Oh. <laughs> So she was stuck there, basically. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm gonna go through hers, and if she comes back, we'll come back to them. How's that sound? Okay. I'm just gonna quickly go through. Oh wow! Oh, what's that? Okay, so now we're on to John. Uh, yeah, this is me. I uh, had I I got this uh, macro lens in March and didn't know how to use it. I is had never done any macro photography, and I really had a full deep dive to, to learn it. Uh, next mm -hmm. slide, please. I, and I also equipped myself with a, with a, a sling bag <clears throat> so that I could really get out with this and never leave home without it. And the one mm -hmm. thing that I added also with the, with the macro lens was a monopod. Mm -hmm. I had a tripod, but I... Yeah. I thought that the monopod was really going to be helpful. And my goal, of course, was uh, flowers, butterflies, mm -hmm. and, and insects. So yeah. the next slide will show you some of my very earliest work, and that was learning how to use, how to deal with this incredibly shallow depth of field. This mm -hmm. shot was, was at F11, one thirteenth of a second at ISO 100, and there's no way you could do this handheld. I was on a monopod. These buds in my yard are only an inch long, and to get all of them, to get that depth of field, I had to I had to be up at f11, mm -hmm. uh, which made that very show, slow shutter speed way beyond what you could handheld. But I, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I developed some technique, and then um, over over time, shooting about a thousand shots uh, <laughs> with, with the monopod, and then I, and then I started out to a butterfly garden, and that was my goal was to trace this these butterflies. And so, the the next shots uh, are the ones that I got in order. This is, I was so so delighted to see uh, this, but in order to get this shot, 
I had to learn how to how to handhold because the monopod was no good. I could not trip. Mm -hmm. So the monopod got pitched, and then I had to to, and I had to shoot these so fast, five hundredth of a second. So it really did mean that I had to stop way, way. I mean, go full open there at my my lenses. Uh, I believe I was at f. Um, 22 maybe 4.5 here oh, so very okay. shallow depth of field yeah. and um, so a 500th of a second also ISO 100 so I wouldn't have much grain and then the next shot um, very nice I, I was getting better and uh, it's uh, it, it's I like I like this because it really is sharp sharp focus and in order to do this, I was shooting in burst. And I would come back sometimes to the house with a hundred images from one little session with one butterfly and, and find one, one of them that was yeah. really, yeah. really sharp. It's very uh, discouraging because, when you come back and you can't find any of it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, my I, a one out of a hundred is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And then- your location on that? I beg your pardon? Where was your the location? These were all done at the Parkville Nature Sanctuary. They have a very mature butterfly garden. Okay. There for years, and and so it, it's it's really great uh, to to get all of our native species. Hey, John, just a comment. I understand that the monarchs are becoming somewhat endangered. Totally, we're a part of the I thirty five corridor. National coalition of states uh, between Mexico and Canada, and we're right here in the middle of it, and um, and so uh, many cities uh, have have gone all in to uh, support monarch uh, re renewal and to get these. Uh, the next shot, uh, go ahead to that one, please, uh, J Jonathan. Uh, we need to plant this milkweed. Yeah. And uh, because that is that is their host plant where they lay their eggs and so forth. So, so this garden has a big um, this wow. nature sanctuary has has a really nice mature butterfly garden. So also this one was shot at a, a one five hundredth and f three point five at ISO one hundred. So nice. Um, I, I I know that. Uh, people go on safaris <laughs> to, <laughs> to, you know, to get exotic animals. But to me, these were so satisfying because they were mine, my, right here in my neighborhood. And, and um, so I, I, I saw things with this macro lens that I've never seen before. <laughs> Learned a lot about mm -hmm. species yes, you do. And habitat. And it was, very, uh, it was very heartwarming to do this. Thank you. You know, I, I have a, a church friend who has gone out and she found a, a number of monarch eggs, put them into her terrarium. They've now proceeded to, last I saw, they're at the, the, the caterpillar stage and getting ready to go into the chrysalis stage. And she's all hunting for milkweed that she can plant even more in her backyard. So uh, it, it's, there are people trying to preserve them and, and uh, encourage them to, to survive. So. Yeah, they, they are now migrating, uh, starting their migration this between now and, and October, they'll be migrating on to Mexico. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Golly. Get a nice pick. Thank you. Yeah. Go on, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've read somewhere that monarchs are genetically programmed to uh, take a right turn when they're uh, when they come out as butterflies, and they do that four times, so they go around the country that way. Mm. Okay, interesting. Well, Dick, your turn. Okay, notice a white sign at the far left. It's a Harper County Fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last last month or early this month, I guess it was. Um, my wife Kathy is is a Harper native. And so every year we go down to see the uh, uh, 
the fair. In this case, it's uh, sheep showing, animal showing. It's uh, um, she knows some of the kids uh, involved in that, um, but that wasn't so relevant other than this, I think, really captures um, the, the, the youth uh, who plan to stay on the farm uh, for as long as they care to or marry on the farm and raise a family of their own. Um, but uh, Kathy is especially, my wife Kathy is especially fond of, of uh, sheep. So I wanted to make sure that we got that one. So here they are, you can see they're leading in. The stalls uh, are way back in the distance. Um, so they work their way up to the, to the ring and the judge is standing there on the left. So uh, it's just, I just kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Harper, Kansas is uh, 45 miles southwest of Wichita. Wow. Okay, okay. next. Mm -hmm. That is uh, young tobacco out there in that field in, in front of us. And the corner of the barn is a oh, that's another. tobacco farm, barn. Um, we attended a wedding of a grand niece uh, of mine, <clears throat> and this uh, this barn was on the property. It's uh, it's it's several of those places in uh, Weston where they convert, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this in this case they do a lot of um, weddings and uh, parties, but especially they like weddings, um, and I especially like to. Uh, forget about weddings and go on and see what barns they have on the property. And so, uh, uh, in fact, we were an hour late getting to the wedding anyway, which I will show you the reason why in a few minutes here. So anyway, this, this is just a very classic, typical tobacco farm. Yeah, it's a very nice composition, Dick. Thank you. What is the tower in the center, Dick? Uh, just uh, um, probably granary. Uh, okay, thank you. I thought it would look like water or something. I didn't know. I don't think so. Thank you. I like the I like the texture of the wood. That's quite beautiful. I, nice? Yeah, don't you I love that? Okay, we can move. Ooh. Oh, that's nice too. So, oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. That's outside my bedroom window. <laughs> and my my fence that looks like it's kind of dirty but it's just old um character <laughs> it's just not very often i could i could get just that <clears throat> um i did highlight it a little bit did you? um uh, intensified the color just a little bit mm -hmm. um, but the shot has not been altered in any other way yeah. nice um, it's very nice. Thank you. That's a morning. It's a morning shot, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We can move. I call that morning haze. Wow. That's nice. <laughs> um, if this is um, on the north side of the Call River at DeSoto. DeSoto yeah. residing on the south side of the river. Um, as you cross the Wyandotte uh, Street Bridge, and then hang a left over toward uh, Linwood. This mm -hmm. is County Road 2. Um, I've gone by that barn for so many times for, for having lived in this community for 29 years. Uh, finally, um, I went to their door a number of times and asked if I could take a shot. It's the ethical thing to do. I could never find anybody home. Hmm. Uh, so I went ahead and sneaked a shot and uh, have in mind that I may offer them a picture. Okay. Nice. Is that taken in March by chance? No, um, I'm trying to think. Um, it was early summer. Uh, I just see that 
The trees look to be in spring. That's why. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. And I really did not mark a date on it. Uh, I could, I could look it up, but, uh, and I will also admit that I uh, enhanced the intensity just a bit. Yep. Great job. Yeah, that's very striking. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very pretty. I, like I said, I drive by that thing a couple times a month, and um, I just thought I'd grab it. Okay. Next. <laughs> oh, that's nice. This has a little abstract quality to it because of the intensifying. I use Snapseed. Y'all remember uh -huh. Snapseed? Anybody who yeah. was at our yep. yeah at our show what a year or so ago? Yeah. Um, you just don't think. Well, well, this is rafters of that corner of the barn that we that you saw a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's facing uh, north. Um, and I just, I just like the confounding nature of it. Um, and then I really did emphasize it just for the sake of mm -hmm. the colors. What, you, what you can get out of an abstract. Because mm -hmm. um, the rafters themselves in their natural brown, um, yeah, yeah kind of dull. Mm -hmm. but this one I'll, I'll, I'll put into a show somewhere. But I didn't, I didn't, the beauty of it is I did not add any color. The color is there, hmm. just intensified mm -hmm. significantly. Um, and I just, I thought it was very pretty. So I thought you might enjoy that. Very nice. Good job. Okay, Jonathan, where are we? Aha. Uh -huh. nice. Some of you will recognize that bridge. Um, yeah. the wedding that I told you that we went to when I took this last barn picture and the previous tobacco uh, yeah. shot uh, is in Weston. We live here on the western edge of the county. We, we when we go to, go to Weston, which we do enjoy doing, we head up to Leavenworth, cross over oh. the Missouri River. So that's the Leavenworth Bridge. Yeah. Well, I wish it looked like that the day we tried to go to the wedding because we got, oh, about 25 yards onto the bridge, noticed that there was a traffic backup. Uh-oh. Uh, we tried to go early because we like to roam around Weston a little bit, mm -hmm. which we had planned to do, give us another 45 minutes to go play around and then come on back to the wedding, which is on that east side of town between the highway and, and town. Um, happened to be a total roadblock. There was a <clears throat> disastrous uh, uh, truck automobile accident on the Missouri side. Mm. We were backed up. Uh. So we were there 45 minutes. Oops. Finally, the policeman um, came walking across the bridge and we were, we had, I don't know how many cars you can get on that bridge they were on there <laughs> and he started telling people you turn around you'll never get through and i said well, why didn't you go to in weston and they you think you really cared so we'll turn around headed back south got on highway kansas highway five yeah down through walcott which mm -hmm. we're very familiar with um got on i-35 went up to platte city mm -hmm. hopped off and then made our way west over to Weston an hour late. Oh boy. So it's a good thing that we weren't in the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, uh, um, oh gosh, what do we call the, uh, the best man who is the, who is the groom's brother? He was in that same pileup. Yeah. I mean, stack up, not the pileup, but uh, yeah. so he was an hour late. Oh, wow. So you didn't miss the wedding after all? I beg pardon? You didn't miss the wedding after all? Did they wait? Oh, just an hour of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they waited for the best we, man. We got there in time for cake and other desserts. <laughs> that's, that's the key. <laughs> all right. I have some questions. What is pouring off the right side of the of that, about, about whatever that thing is, holding the bridge up? Is that right? 
Is that water? You see I'm not, it? I'm not with you, Alan. Uh, it's a birch okay. tree. It's what? Oh. A birch tree. Oh. Yeah, it's in the background. Oh, it is. Okay, never mind. It looked like water running off of it. It's what I thought. Yeah. Yep, good point. Thank you. Okay, good, because I never figured you out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan, see what else I have. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Back to the Harper County Fair. This is the, uh, the youngest son of a young friend of ours um, <clears throat> who lived uh, close to Kathy's old farm that she grew up in. Uh, and I'm not sure, he's, I don't know, he's about seven years old, I think. Uh, and that steer is a little bit bigger than he is. Mm -hmm. uh, he won grand champion after all. Oh, wow. <laughs> So in case, in case you've never been to a county fair. They're pretty fun. This is one of the things they do. And I thought, and this is a young fellow, by the way. It's, I, I first thought he was a, a daughter rather than a son. Uh, but he wasn't close enough to hear it. See so that's good. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, OK, do I have, I think. I think yeah. that's all for me. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> mine, are, mine are mostly family things that we've done. Um, this is Mother's Day, and this is my children. Is uh, your name Miss Bell, yeah. Lori? Jennifer, huh? Is that Yodels, Vodelsburg? Vodelsburg. Well, that's oh. so many wrong. <laughs> my apologies. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> last, year, last year, I called you by your previous married name and this year I misspell it your married name. I'm just I'm striking out right and left. <laughs> Sorry. Rodelsburg, okay. Oh, yeah. That's a good pick. <laughs> Happy and, people. Yeah, so this is Mother's Day. That's our backyard. There's no composition to it other than we're being goofy. <laughs> so that was all that was that. But so that was part of you know I I tried to take pictures of things that we did during COVID with the family mostly. So <laughs> you can go next. Mine will be very quick. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is our COVID dog. Um, this is Archer. We decided about a month into COVID that we we're going to get a dog. Mm -hmm. So here he is, and here he will stay for the next 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is, it, is that a Shih Tzu? It's a, a Bichon Shih Tzu mix. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's part Shih Tzu. So. Anyway. And watch your language. His name is Arthur, and he was born on Valentine's Day. They didn't, they wouldn't let, Dave wouldn't let me name him Romeo, so that was out the window. So, anyway, next. Beautiful face. Oh, he's sweet. The kids oh, love him. Nice. Um, this was, it, we went to Gatlinburg in June, ah. and this was a hike we took up to Laurel, the Laurel Falls in the Smoky Mountains. And so that's the falls behind us, and all of us hiked up there and tromped around, played in the water for a while, and um, then came back. That was just one of our visits into the park while we were there. Yeah. And yeah, if was, you've never been to the Smokies, you should. We've driven through them before, but it's the first time we'd actually stop and spend any time there. It, they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Next. <laughs> Oh, this is another picture on that same hike up. That was, well, we weren't quite up there yet. Um, if you can count, we lost a couple people on the way up the hike that turned around and went back. But <laughs> Nana made it. <laughs> yeah, so we, that was on our way up there. But that's the Smoky Mountains part of them in the background. Um, it was beautiful. And on that hike up, we did off in the distance. Of course, I didn't have a camera strong enough to get it, but we saw two bear cubs. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Walking up. Yeah. I'm okay. curious, where did you stay? We rented a house in Gatlinburg. It was like a, like a log cabin home that we rented. It was beautiful. Oh. In the mountains, very quiet. It was nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Next. That's the view from our uh, deck on our house that we rented. Mm. Wow. So we saw various mm. versions of that. Some days it actually was kind of, you know, hazy, smoky looking. Um, other days it was cloudy and rainy. It just, we got a little bit of everything while we were there. It was beautiful. And the whole area just, it looked like that, except when you went into town and found all the tourists. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 
Next. Oh. <laughs> this is Miss Delaney. So she's going to be in another picture too, but this is the 4th of July. And she was, was having a fine time with the kids doing their sparklers and their um, little, little kid fireworks that we bought. But she was having a great time. <laughs> and as her hair grows, her curls just keep getting curlier. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Um, in, I went up to Minnesota in July and I'm from South Minneapolis. And so we drove down to the area where George Floyd was killed. And that's just blocks from where my sister used to live until about 10 years ago and blocks from where I used to, where I actually grew up. Um, so this was just one of the murals in that entire intersection. Of course, the, the, we saw the photo or the, the painting of that we saw on the news every day of George Floyd. On all, all the corners, there's murals or, or tagging or paintings of some kind. And this one I thought was I, I, more unique than the others, I guess. And what it says there is, if you give me a place to stand, I shall move the earth. Um, so I think there's some you know, uh, icons from the African-American community in that picture, there, there were, it was just, I don't want to use the word surreal, but it seemed very, you know, interesting to me because all the intersection, that whole intersection was closed. Um, there were murals everywhere. There was a, they had created a monument in the center of the intersection. So nobody was going any, anywhere there, you know, there, so there's music playing. Um, there, there was literature being passed out, and they had face masks being passed out because of COVID. It was just a, a very peaceful, quiet area at that time. Um, but of course, that was several weeks after uh, he was killed, and things had settled down to some degree in the community. And then we did also drive by or drive through Lake Street area, um, where all the looting and burning and vandalism was. And along that stretch of, of Lake Street, uh, my parents actually had a restaurant there at one time when I was growing up, which is, you know, it was gone, but that whole area had been destroyed. So it was quite a sobering experience to be there. So next. And this was why I was in Minnesota. My, we, <laughs> I was up there my sister, to help my sister celebrate um, 40 years of recovery. So I figured that was a, the great reason to leave Kansas, brave COVID and go to Minnesota. So that's why we were there was to help her celebrate her 40th year. Um, so we're pretty proud of her and she's done a great job and continues to hope, well, she won't have another 20, 30 years maybe <laughs> out of it. So that was why we were there. Is that my last one? I don't know, oh. but that's a beautiful cake. It is. I was thinking, I was looking at the flowers. <laughs> Very pretty. Um, we took the kids during, uh, what was that in July also? We took the kids to um, Fantastic Caverns. And then since we were close enough, we drove over to um, Lambert's. The kids had ever been there and had the throw rolls. <laughs> so they loved bread, first of all. So they were having a fine time. And every time the roll guy came around, they're, you know, raising their hands. <laughs> <and waiting for them. laughs> it was fun. That was a fun day. So that was our that was our huge lunch and the roll pile in the middle there that you can see. <laughs> so that was the one place we went that uh, I don't know if was that county's uh, guidelines were much more lax than ours were, but there was no social distancing in that restaurant. They had every booth full, every table was full. It was packed. Now, the staff all had masks on and we had to wear masks as we were moving through the restaurant. But as far as where the, the patrons were sitting, there was no social distancing happening. Thank goodness they weren't as busy as they usually were with all the buses of tourists and everything. Yeah. But we had fun though. Uh, next. Oh. That's our girl again. The boys don't get quite as many pictures anymore since she came along, but. <laughs> <laughs> We're grateful that we have a pool in our neighborhood. So we, when we have the kids a couple days a week this summer, we've been at the pool quite often. So this is just one of our pool days. <laughs> Having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess well, one more maybe? Nope. 
That's that same picture again. Oh, maybe I did. Nope. Yep. Oh, I don't think it was it. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Now we're running to JW. Yes, I only have two, so I'll have a long narrative. <laughs> 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 no, Marilyn and I, I put this on Facebook, so some of you have seen this, but we decided to, as I said, get out of Dodge in June. So we took a trip through one of our favorite areas, the Flint Hills, and we started off in uh, Council Grove, which is really a neat, very historic mm -hmm. town. In fact, we used to own a lake cabin there. We sold it, unfortunately. So from Council Grove, you get on Scenic 177, mm -hmm. and that takes you next to Strong City and Cottonwood Falls. Well, on the way, I took a lot of pictures, and this was one of my favorites of the many, many. We probably saw a thousand, thousands of cattle that day. They were all over the place, and so I took a picture of the cattle. Uh, that's not mine. <laughs> At any rate, uh, it was a beautiful trip, and then when we got to uh, Cottonwood Falls, there's that historic old courthouse there. It's supposedly the oldest continuously active courthouse in the state, and from there, we went on Scenic 177, and went to a place, a little bitty place called Matfield Green. Now, some of you may know or remember Tom Tarnowski, uh -huh. talk photography. Yeah. Well, Tom, several years ago, fell in love with Matfield Green, what a second home there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very small town. The people have a sense of humor. Most of them are artists. And there's one sign as you're going into Matfield Green says, Matfield Green, next six exits. There are six streets <laughs> in the town. <laughs> anyway, Tom is in the process of building a bar there. He wanted some entertainment for the locals. And so if you ever go in that direction, it's a red Butler building just outside of town. But the problem is with COVID, everything came to a standstill. Yeah. And I'm not sure it's still been completed. Uh, it's kind of a sad situation because I'm sure he's put a lot of money into it. Yeah, so anyway, it's that's the it's on the north side of town. Yes. It's, it, you can't miss it. It's bright, bright red yeah. off to the left. Oh, so anyway, just a scenic, beautiful drive. And of course, it goes by the prairie, tall grass prairie natural preserve. That's a great place to stop. So from there, we then got on the interstate and came back home through my next slide, Emporia. Uh -huh. right. And the reason for this, this is the old Emporia High School. Yeah. No longer in operation. The reason I took the picture is this is where I had my first job. Huh. Mm -hmm. And it was just a wonderful beginning to my career. Uh, and they shut, then they shut down the school right after he got out. <laughs> but it's a great classic old building of that era. And I'm not sure if they'll ever do anything with it. It would be a nice place to have either a retirement home or maybe apartments. But I took a picture and it brought back lots of good memories. Yeah. And that's my story. <laughs> Yay. Well, then I've had a couple more at the very end. We um, went out to uh, Big Bull Creek Park, the newest park in Johnson County, part of the Parson uh, Rec District. And as we were walking along, ran across this twist of wood and rocks piled in it. Uh, we, my wife and I just thought it was a sculpture, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a natural sculpture. And I, I just enjoyed it because of the, the texture of it and all. And then this summer, um, we have been trying to take in as much baseball as can be allowed, <laughs> social <laughs> distancing and all. And um, I, I actually grabbed these frames out of a um, out of a movie I shot of my grandson. Oh yeah. And uh, I just like the the movement. Good job, Jonathan. Good pictures. Yes, yeah, thank Great you. Great pictures. Yep. Well, everybody contributed. 